Hey folks, thanks for stopping by to check out the dynamic range on the Hasselblad X2D 100C. If you haven't seen it, I've done several videos now and we have a playlist you can check out with all of my coverage of this camera. Now Hasselblad are claiming a 15 stop dynamic range with this camera. I haven't seen anything official, but the rumor is, and people who've dived into the spec sheet seem to believe, that this guy is sporting the exact same 102 megapixel sensor as the Fuji's, but still exactly what you get out of a sensor does have to do with how it's customized by each manufacturer. We saw that with sensors being used between Sony and Nikon in the past and getting slightly different results. Also, this has ever so slightly higher resolution than the Fuji in terms of actual final pixels, so the way it's been implemented is a part of that equation. Now, you won't necessarily need all of that dynamic range. You know, it's helpful and that YouTubers like myself often test it to show you what it's capable of, but how often do you grossly underexpose an image and need to recover it by several stops? Maybe not too much, but it is still cool to check out. So let's go get a range of different shots with this guy and show you what it's capable of. Now for all of that shooting folks, of course I was shooting in 16-bit RAW. Most cameras only give you the option of 12 or 14. This gives you the full 16. So let's now jump in and take a look in Focus, which is Hasselblad's own editing software. It's free, you can use it for yourself, and it's designed specifically for the 3FR RAW format that this uses, and you're likely to see the best results and the best color out of that rather than using Lightroom or something. So I have three landscapes and one portrait. Now the portrait actually worked out really nicely. It was just a misfire of flash. So I was shooting with Felicia getting some different shots here in studio testing out the camera for other videos. And on one of them, the strobe didn't fire. So we've got lots of room to play there. So this first one I shot intentionally wanting to get a high dynamic range challenge image for this test. And the other two were actually part of multi-image bracketed shots that I did to be able to put together a HDR. So this final one in particular is incredibly underexposed. I don't know that there's, it's even going to be possible to recover this one, but let's try. Taking a look at the portrait, let's take a look. You can see the histogram is all crunched up on the left of frame. So the whole shot is going to need to be brought up. The background has the continuous light running. So that's gonna be the first thing that's going to blow out on us. So we will probably still need, wanna bring up the, the shadows more than the highlights. But damn, it really, I mean, it's all there. That's, um, yeah, that's not too shabby, huh? And that's 1 60th of a second on a 100 megapixel camera. Well, it really doesn't need a whole lot. Um, if we want to bring just our highlights up just a little there. The color, even though we've had to push the exposure two stops, bring up the shadows, uh, and you know, bring up the highlights as well, the colors are just on point, and there's really not noise coming in here at all. You're gonna to wanna to check this one out. I'll make sure I include the portrait in the sample files for you as well. Let's take a look at a nice close up there on the eyes and compare how that looked before we made our adjustments. So on this first one, you can see the underside of the bridge is so underexposed, but the side of the building that's got the light coming through is kind of right. So let's take a little look here, what happens. Something I love in Focus, this is again, not an ad, not affiliated with Hasselblad or Focus, this is just you know something that I miss in Lightroom, 
is the shadow fill. They used to have fill light in Lightroom and they took it out a couple of years ago. I always liked that tool. But here, where this one is correctly exposed in part, but just a really broad dynamic range, just bringing up the shadows here is probably gonna be enough. We don't need to bring up the whole image like the later one. So here, bringing in the shadows, you can see it makes just an incredible difference. I mean, look at that if we have the line going through the shot of where it was and then going back to set this back to zero. I mean, just look at the difference it's making on the image. There is so much data hidden in these files. 16-bit makes a difference. Now here we still also have the option to bring up shadows. We have exposure, which we could completely go to town on, but I don't think it's going to need too much of that. Um, and you'll see by bringing up the exposure a bit, I'm actually overexposing the building now. So it also has the recovery tool for bringing back highlights that you've kind of blown out. So by bringing that down, everything now is easy to see. All the details there, we're not getting loads of luminance noise or color noise coming through there. But it does look unnatural. And I think that's what a lot of people, myself included, don't like about HDR images is because they look too unnatural. So this way, we're seeing the underside of the bridge, but it doesn't look too unnatural because we still do have some true black points there. So if we take a look at that as our final result and comparing it to where we started out, you can see the image is completely usable despite the challenging situation. I'm genuinely not sure if the next two images are going to recover that well, so let's find out together. Now this one from Hong Kong's peak is basically this building that I was focused on and that I want to bring up. That's the, you know, one of the most famous buildings in central Hong Kong. It was an incredibly hazy day. So as we bring up the shadows here, you're going to see lots of haze. That's not the camera, that's not the sensor. All the cameras we were shooting on that day, including the great Fuji GFX 100S and my Nikon Z9, the, everything saw haze because it, it was a hazy day. So here, I think we're gonna need to do more than just shadow fill, but let's start with that one. I might actually only go halfway on that because the whole shot needs to be brought up in exposure, not just the shadows. So then here, bringing up our shadows, let's say two stops. I think it's gonna need more than that. So bring up our brightness a little as well. Uh, maybe just a little less than that. Then I'm going to push the overall exposure up here. And then because of that haze, let's see when we zoom in on the building now, you can see it's certainly come back a lot, but bringing in the clarity to get rid of some of that haze and then maybe a little bit of detail. We might better use the recovery to just pull back some of the brightest highlights. And well, the recovery seems to add a fair bit of pattern noise. Interesting. You can see the kind of result we're getting there. We've really been able to bring it back and that's not having brought in, there's so many tools we haven't even touched here. We haven't even looked at noise filter or our saturation settings or anything like that. But again, taking a look at where we started out to where we ended up, you would think they were different frames taken at different exposures. And yes, on this one, where we've done more drastic work, there is some noise coming in on the shot, but it's going to be pretty easy to eliminate. Yeah, and then we've got a completely usable file. And now our final image here, you can barely see that band coming through the middle and that was blistering midday sun. It's actually not too far from the first image that I shared, but way, way, way darker. And I genuinely don't know if we're gonna be able to bring this back. So let's take a look here. Starting out with exposure, the whole thing's going to need to come up. The, even the side of the building there at two stops up is too dark. So let's push this across here. I'm gonna bring the, the shadows up further bring the shadow fill up, okay, and wow. So it's still able to bring all of that up for us. It's just, we are for sure getting some color and luminance noise coming through there. Um, I don't wanna do too much on it, but if we take a look here, if we do bring the color and luminance noise adjustment here, So look, for a 20 second adjustment on an image that was completely unusable, 
yes, there's work to be done. Yes, there's definitely color noise coming in here. It's by no means perfect. But considering where we started out, I would have to say the claims of dynamic range on this camera do seem to be true. Just keep it in mind, it doesn't mean you just have a blank check that you can underexpose anything and bring it back. There will be artifacts and there will be trade-offs and image degradation. So still, the best you can do is to try and expose things properly in the field. If you're in the Hasselblad X system, please do me a favor and check out in the description below my new expert setup guide. It runs you through this new camera, all of the custom controls, everything physically on the camera and how to make use of it. An initial setup to show you what you might want to customize to get the most out of it to begin with. Then a complete menu deep dive explaining every single menu item, what it does and when you might want to apply that. It also has practical in-studio shooting demonstrations to show you how to get the best kinds of results as well as cheat sheets and more. You can see just all of those details below and you can download some sample files from today's video.